few minutes still to give everyone a chance to join the meeting. Okay, let's get started. Good afternoon and uh, welcome to this webinar on how to take care of extended producer responsibility in Finland. Uh, my name is Tina Vermate and I'm working for the National EPR Authority here in Finland, which is a Pirkanmaa Center for Economic Development, Transport and the Environment. And my tasks uh, include issues related to distance selling. And in the next hour, we'll be going through the basics on how to take care of EPR in Finland and um, providing you with the necessary information that, that you need uh, to know how to be compliant with our national waste legislation. And let's go through the agenda first. Uh, my colleague and our team leader, Teemu Virtanen, will be giving you an overview of the Finnish extended producer responsibility system and uh, then I will go through uh, the practical steps on how to take care of EPR as a distance seller. And finally, Olli Alanen from the Cooperation Group of Finnish EPR schemes will be telling you about the roles and duties of producer organizations in Finland. And after that, you will have uh, the possibility to ask questions or you can also write them on the chat and we'll make sure to answer any questions that you have. Um, the webinar will be recorded and you will, of course, receive a link to the recording as well as the material afterwards. Uh, I do have to ask for a, a little bit of patience with that because we have to get the recording subtitled and that will take approximately one to two weeks. Uh, but let's move on and get Teemu then started with his uh, presentation. Over to you, Teemu. Is your microphone on, Teemu? Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay, I saw my face very briefly. <laughs> uh, before we start uh, the presentation and, and as Tina said, uh, I'm team leader of uh, our small EPR uh, supervising group, and uh, then we can go on with this presentation. So, Dina, could you change? Okay, thank you. First, all the dull things, and that means legislation, which is not actually so dull as you may think it's sometimes it's very interesting and and lots of lots of different kinds of issues to tackle uh, but EPR is based on legislation so it's it's requirement which is based on legislation and it's defined in Finnish waste act which is also available in English so if you want to to find out more detailed about the background of this EPR requirements. It's it's possible to find there. And we have had quite many changes lately. Uh, the National Waste Act revision was made just about two months ago. And uh, the reason for that was this waste framework directive and also the single use, single use plastics directive, which, which we implemented to our national legislation. But the main things in this revision were that uh, the produce responsibility is now affecting to distance sellers in all sectors. Uh, it used to be only in, in electronic and electrical devices, but now it's, it's all distance sellers who sell 
uh, from abroad straight to end users to Finland in in this produce responsibility sectors. They are affected of, of produce responsibility and Tina will tell lots about that later. And then all producers were required to join producer organizations by the end of 2021 excluding of course the single use plastics because um, the legislation is is still in transposition mode so there are different dates on that but it's very important to to understand and then that in finland all producers have to join producer organizations and also producer organization for packaging industry has to take care of all materials so there's uh, some kind of one door uh, approach to that so that uh, producers don't have to join uh, in, in packaging sector in different material based uh, producer organizations. There's one producer organization which takes care of all materials. But all producer sectors have their own producer organizations, although they do cooperate. So there is no organization which takes care of all producer responsibilities. So there are separate for EE, separate for batteries and accumulators, separate for packaging, separate for uh, end of life vehicles. So many producers uh, import or produce or, or distance sell things that, that cover different categories of produce, or produce responsibility and they have to join several producer organizations, unfortunately, but that's the case. And then this single use plastics legislation is added to Finnish legislation in in just late in in last year. This tobacco, fishing gear, etc. And single use plastics is not the right uh, expression because it covers also other products than single use products like fishing gear. And Note also that uh, there's lots of discussion in EU to add new sectors like textiles, cosmetics, medicine, and uh, uh, extended produce responsibility. So there will be changes in the future. We are very sure of it. And as you well know, produce responsibility refers to companies' obligation to handle the waste management of products. They have imported or manufactured or distance sold uh, when the products are discharged, which means that uh, it's the whole life cycle that they have to take care of. And EPR waste streams in Finland in include electronic and electrical devices, batteries, accumulators, packaging, and end of life vehicles, and those all are based on on EU legislation and EU EPR uh, legislation. Then we have tires and paper and paper products, which are under national legislation. They are partly under uh, EU legislation through a waste framework directive because there are some requirements also for national uh epr systems and then we have this new single-use plastics stream which is in implement implementing phase at the moment but what does that produce responsibility actually means in finland it means that producers have to arrange collection network which is defined in legislation mainly in, in government decrees. Then they have to take care of transportation and treatment of the waste and pay all those costs. I know that in some countries, a collection network and collection is not under produce responsibility. It's becoming more and more, more covering those two, but in some countries it's not. But in Finland, it's the 
the whole line of waste management is under EPR. But for single-use plastics cleaning costs, there are some uh, specific rules about tobacco, for example. They uh, cover only the, the cleaning uh, costs and they have to pay that to communi communities. So it's not the same kind of uh, EPR as in some other sectors. And then there's no value amount limits on producer responsibility. So if it's a professional, uh, some professionally do something, then it's under EPR. So it's, if it's a company, it's under EPR. You can say it that way. But there's no value or amount limits. So even if they import or, or distance selling small amounts of, of goods to Finland, they are under EPR. So they, there are no uh, small company exclusions. And retailers are usually not producers unless they are also importers. So that is good to know. But retailers may have their own responsibilities about collection, like portable batteries, some EE. But producers are entitled to, to collect the waste from the back door of the retailers and take care of all other uh, waste management responsibilities. And in some sectors like uh, EE and single-use plastics, foreign distance sellers have to nominate authorized representative to Finland to take care of responsibilities on behalf of that foreign company. And that uh, authorized representative have to be based on Finland. And that comes from the, the directives. So uh, it's a bit confusing bit because that requirement doesn't cover all sectors. It, covers only some sectors. So it's nominations mandatory for we. It will be on soup, single-use plastics, and also in, in the future also on aqueous and batteries. And then these authorized representatives, they have to join the producer organization. So joining producer organization is always mandatory. So that's very important to understand. But what is producer organization? There are multiple pros for each waste stream. In some waste stream, there's only one. In some others, there may be five. But in Finnish legislation, it says that producer organizations have to be non-profit and only producers can establish those and be a member of producer organizations. So it's producers do and, and cover their, their requirements and, and, uh, and uh, take care of their responsibilities together. But it's them, they who do it. It's some, it can't be any um, waste operator or, or anything else so that they would uh, establish producer organizations. That's impossible in Finland. It's only producers who can establish them and take care of, of them and be a member of them. But then this pro takes care of all obligations on behalf of the producer. So producers who are members of, of producer organization don't have to separately report to authorities or register to authorities. Pro takes care of that. It takes care of collection, transport, reuse, recycling, and also that reporting. But if companies produce responsibility includes several branches like electrical appliances and batteries and packaging, company has to take care of produce responsibility separately for each brand. So they have to join several producer organizations. Next, please. And then supervision. Although uh, we are regional state authority, 
by legislation we have a specific task to take care and act as a national producer responsibility authority on registering, monitoring, collecting data from producers and producer organizations. We report statistics and quality reports to Eurostat. We maintain producer register. So we, we cover the whole Finland. So we are national authority, although we are located in regional, uh, under regional authority. So it's us who takes care of this supervising in the whole of Finland. And then Ministry of Environment, they have their own role. They make legislation, they negotiate, negotiate in, in, in Brussels in when they prepare regulations and, and, and directives. So that's their task, but implementing is then our task. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. This is very short, but I hope that gave you some overall view of, of uh, Finnish system. Thank you. Thank you, Teemu. Are there any questions at this point? Otherwise, you can also write your questions on the chat or ask at the end, end of our presentations. If not, then we'll go further in our program. Um, I'm going to tell you now, hopefully in more detail, how to how to take care of, of EPR in Finland. Uh, so, um, according to the Waste Framework Directive, uh, EPR applies to distance sellers in the whole EU from the beginning from the beginning of this year. But uh, in Finland, we've had this obligation already for one and a half years, from July 2021. Um, and they, it, um, according to this legislation, the distance sellers must must organize their EPR obligations in Finland in accordance with the Finnish Waste Act. So that means uh, taking responsibility for the product's whole life cycle. And of course, uh, this is an important part of business compliance for any firm. And uh, by taking care of EPR, your company is also promoting sustainable use of materials and, and circular economy. And here's just uh, still the product groups that Demo mentioned er earlier, just so you have it in, in, the, in the slides, but I won't go through them in more detail right now. Uh, but let's go through who, who is a distance, distance seller. So a distance seller is an operator who is based outside of Finland and sells products that fall under EPR directly to Finnish end users. So basically through their own website or an e-commerce platform. And in distance selling, the seller and buyer are of course not physically present simultaneously. And it's good to remember that the distance seller isn't necessarily the original manufacturer. And in Finland, uh, this applies to B2C as well as B2B sales. And it's not always very simple to define whether a company is a distance seller and who is responsible for EPR, since uh, companies have many different ways of organizing their operations. Uh, we're hoping that with time, the EU legislation will provide us with more uh, precise definitions. But in the meantime, we have to assess the situation case by case. Um, here's, um, here are some of the most typical cases to help you uh, figure out whether you are responsible for EPR in Finland. Um, so if you're selling products directly to a private person, then you are responsible. Uh, also, if you're selling uh, or your company is selling to a Finnish company for the company's own use, then in that case, you're also responsible for EPR. But if you're selling your products to a Finnish importer, then the importer will take care of EPR and you don't have to worry about it. Um, also, if, you're, if you have a Finnish subsidiary and you're selling through that subsidiary, then they will take care of EPR for you. Um, 
And also if you're selling products or components to a Finnish company and they use them to manufacture a new product, then that Finnish company is responsible. Um, a good rule of thumb is to remember that the responsible party for EPR is always the one placing the product on the Finnish market. But of course, there are many different cases and it's not always that simple. Um, well, what about if you're selling partly to end users through distance selling and partly through Finnish importers? Uh, in that case, your company is responsible for the parts sold through distance selling and importers are responsible for their share. And uh, it's always a good idea to also remind them about their obligations because uh, small companies aren't always aware of their obligations. Uh, so if we go deeper into the practical steps on what you actually have to do in order to be compliant. Um, so like Temu mentioned earlier that um, EPR for each product group has to be taken care of separately. Um, there's a, a link where you will find more advice and contact information and so on that you will get with the uh, material. Um, but basically, your options are joining a producer organization, and this is the most common option that most companies choose. Um, another option is to appoint an authorized representative uh, who will then join a, a producer organization on your behalf. And uh, due to EU legislation, um, distance sellers of certain product groups are required to appoint an authorized representative in Finland and they will join a pro on your company's behalf and uh, they have to be based in Finland. Um, so if we look a little bit closer at what, what an authorized representative does, uh, they manage EPR on behalf of a foreign business or distance seller and they assume all the relevant producer responsibility obligations on its behalf. And this includes uh, waste management by joining a producer organization, uh, reporting and all payments related to, to EPR. Uh, this uh, authorized representative is then also legally responsible um, for EPR and can be subject to coercive measures and penalties in accordance with the, our Finnish legislation. And it's good to know that many producer organizations can provide also authorized representative services and uh, some authorized representatives serve, uh, services uh, provide services for multiple product groups. Um, here's a table to help you get an overview of your options. Um, so for we, um, you always have to appoint an authorized representative. Uh, for batteries and accumulators, you have uh, currently still both options open, but in the future, uh, an authorized representative will be mandatory. Um, for packaging, there is currently a 1 million euro turnover limit, but that will be uh, removed uh, at the beginning of next year. And this means that if you're selling anything packaged to Finland from abroad, you need to join a pro. Um, and then for, for single use plastics, they have many different timetables for different requirements and will keep you up to date as they come into force. Uh, for beverage, beverage packaging, it's good to know that we have a deposit and return scheme in Finland. So if you join, join that uh, deposit and return scheme, then you don't need to join a pro separately because they will take care of your EPR through that scheme. Here's just a simple example of how to take care of uh, EPR in Finland for a certain product. And I've chosen a battery operated flashlight. So 
So you need for we you need to appoint an authorized representative. And for batteries and accumulators, you need to either join a pro or appoint an authorized representative. Which will be mandatory in the future, like I said previously. And for packaging, you also have both of those options open. Uh, and to find contact, in contact information for the producer organizations, you can go to our website and I've added the link here. Uh, then a few words about uh, upcoming legislative changes. Um, uh, the EU battery regulation will include a ban on placing on the market, placing products on the market if EPR is not taken care of. We don't have the timeline at this moment, but it's coming in the future. And it's still unclear how that will affect everything. Um, but we do know that similar regulations for we and end of life vehicles are also possible. And um, for EU wide e commerce platform regulations are also also possible, and for example, packaging. So lots of uh, big changes to come in the future, like them spoke about new possible product groups such as textiles and and uh, other groups. Um, and then I still want to let you know that European authorities are enforcing EPR legislation together through cross-border cooperation that we will be uh, developing also in the coming years. And then lastly, there's some links for you. Uh, there's our, our website and a list of um, product groups and producer organizations. Some basic information on distance selling and then some frequently asked questions as well as our contact information. And you're always free to send us any questions or comments that you may have regarding distance selling issues. OK, that was my part. Just going to stop the sharing and I hope we have all on the line. For you to, yes, there you are, if you still open your microphone, then. And we are all set for you to go ahead and and. Start sharing, thank you. Thank you, Tina. Uh, I believe you see my screen, but can you please confirm? Yes, we see. OK, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Olli Alanen. Uh, I'm, I'm here uh, as a representative of the producer organizations in Finland. Uh, on, on, on the day job, I, I, I work for the one of the PROs in Finland, ERP Finland. Uh, but uh, in, in Finland, we have very specific, uh, let's say, coordination and cooperation group of the of the Finnish EPR schemes. Uh, that is an unofficial translation, but uh, but I think it, it, it gives you the picture. Uh, and 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 uh, that's why we can we can be more efficient in Finland, and that's why we can also also help to represent each other. So the so the name of the Name of our cooperation group is, is named Tunk Tuotta Yhteisöjen Neuvottelukunta. And uh, I'm, I'm going to give you some flavor on how, how, how this works from the producer organization point of view, how the how the Tunk is, 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 is working and, and, and what are the roles and duties of the producer organization for Finland. Although I think they were pretty, pretty well presented already by Teemo and Jan and Tina. So uh, we start with this uh, quite crowded picture, but the, the picture is designed to summarize the whole EPR in one picture. So on the left hand side, you, you see the producers uh, who, who manufacture and pack and import the produ products, which at the end of the, their life end up as a waste in the Finnish market, and then and, and consumers who buy and use the packet, packet products and, and, and the and, and, and sort the end of life products to the recycling collection system. 
uh, the, the the different waste streams uh, that that are that are covered by the EPR in Finland uh, are there on the left hand side. And then Pirelu, the the national authority, who has been already presented here, like like said, it's the national authority for the EPR, including controlling and en enforcing, giving advice and information sharing to the producers, and also keeps the producer register. Uh, then the, the producer registers, uh, there are still some producers that organize their own waste management uh, under the new law. Uh, this, this, this role has uh, significantly diminished uh, and, and uh, more and more the producers are part of the producer organizations. After some mergers in the uh, in, uh, in the packaging packaging side, we we currently have 15 PROs for the different waste streams, uh, and the PROs organize the waste management, including collection and recycling and reuse, etc. Then Tunk is the 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 PRO lobbying and communication body made by set up by a a contract between the PROs. Uh, working in cooperation with authorities and raising awareness for EPR. At the end of the day, the, the, the aim is that we, we gather the materials for recycling and then receiving a new life, saying that one, one's waste is another, another's raw material. And, and basically, the, the, the euros going through the system are the net costs of the producer responsibility, which are covered by the recycling fees which are ultimately paid by consumers and, and uh, therefore we have an obligation to be efficient. Just to just to detail the the different uh, different streams we have and different producer uh, amounts and, and the different tonnages that are that are collected uh, in Finland. Uh, the, the the majority of the, of, the, of the producers are packaging and, and and because of the changes in the legislation this this number will be significantly higher than 4700 uh, in, in 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 paper there are 70 producers end of life vehicles uh, to 260 in tires 3 310 and in electronics 1500 in batteries accumulators 1,300. Uh, the the collection points and the collection networks they differ differ based on the based on the collected material. So so uh, ranging from less than 300 take back points uh, in 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 the cars uh, up to up to 13,000 retail con collection points in in in, in the batteries. Uh, it is different for each stream. Uh, TUG, the cooperation group, uh, was originally established back in 2015 uh, by, by cooperation contract between the Finnish producer responsibility organizations. Uh, all the producer organization and also the depository return systems that are permitted by, uh, by the EPA, Pir Elu, uh, can be part of the this cooperation group. If there are individual producers taking care of their responsibility or purely operator driven producer responsibility organization, they 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 are limited not to join the cooperation group. Uh, we have a rotating uh, chair chair. Uh, typically, the, the term of, of, of chairman is, is one year, but uh, typically it's, it's two years. Uh, and, and currently my colleague from another another we scheme, uh, Sertu, uh, Mr. Arto Bumalainen is our, our chairman and the general secretary, who is the main contact for, for Tunk, uh, is, is Mrs. Maya Hall. Uh, the, the, after, after the the, the, the merger in the packaging scheme, uh, we, we now have 13, 13 members in the, in the TUNC. You can see the logos. I just added the, added the waste streams. These, these, these uh, PROs are responsible for 
and and then there are two two that are not part of the of of, of, of this cooperation group. Uh, the the cooperation group roles and main activities is that the the PROs have a a shared table where where the PROs can can coordinate the lobbying activities of the PROs, uh, making sure that the producer use are taken into account when the legislation or 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 practices are are, are changed. Uh, also, participation in the public discussion. And, and influence on behalf of, of, of the PROs is being coordinated whenever there is an uh, agenda that is shared between the different PROs. If there are very, very stream specific or PRO specific topics, the PROs are, are doing them individually. Uh, then uh, improving the awareness of the producer responsibility and, and, and communication of the responsibility matters to, to various different stakeholder groups in, in, in Finland and also outside. Uh, also, we, 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 we co cooperate in production of the content, uh, improving the awareness. Uh, for instance, uh, there is a yearly arranged EPR seminar for the producers that is also streamed. Unfortunately, it's in Finnish, uh, so, so um, probably Many of you cannot cannot join and get the full experience there. Also, we we we, we produce uh, education materials. For instance, uh, these recycling heroes uh, book booklet for the for the school children, and and uh, also all kinds of recycling related research can be coordinated so that. All the PROs don't have to do all this work individually, uh, and 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 by by coordinating and cooperating, uh, the 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 we 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 can get the best of both worlds. First of all, to to have the PROs independent, uh, transparent, uh, and 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 taking care of the matters of their their uh, producer group and their material group, but at the same time. Uh, bundle some activities where the where the goals are shared, so that uh, we can enable to be efficient uh, and, and 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 manage manage uh, the business and, and 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 manage the operations uh, efficiently. Uh, the, there there are I think further opportunities for operational operational cooperation, but uh, uh, until now it has been quite low. And, and as being one coordinated body, instead of having several different uh, not aligned groups, we, we, we try to be a reliable partner for the authorities and legislators in Finland and, 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 and give aligned uh, comments and objectives. The, the the roles and duties of the producer organization in Finland, I think that they have been pretty much presented here already, but uh, but just to just to uh, continue on that, the the PROs are, are the ones who, who register the producers and update their producer uh, up, update their own producer register in the national register, so that the double registration is is, is not needed. Also, the PROs uh, organize the collection and recycling from the collection point network uh, with their own contracts with, with the collection and recycling operators, including municipality network, retail network, and other, other networks. Uh, also, the PROs report the volumes placed on the market, collected, recycled, reused to the, to the EPA. And the also, uh, we, we, the, the producers organizations are responsible for establishing their own self-controlling procedures according to the self-controlling plan, uh, in, including accounting procedures, evaluation of full payment of the cost responsibility, evaluation of producer cost sharing, and necessary auditing procedures. 
also uh, DROs are responsible for arranging the awareness creation and information campaigns for consumers and de develop reuse and eco modulation practices to further improve the circular economy. A couple of specific points uh, for the for the producer responsibility in Finland. First of all, as as already mentioned, uh, the, the the PRO field is uh, organized as uh, small individual producer organizations uh, to to, uh, to to be to be efficient and to be to be having like a wide view. We we have this well, very well functioning cooperation model. I am not aware that, that that similar models exist in a similar way in other countries, uh, and, and and this is definitely a strength for Finland. Also, in in in, in I think in, in in many countries the 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 different pricing models can can be used for different different members. Maybe maybe there are kickbacks. Maybe there are there are some volume discounts. Uh, these are not allowed in Finland. Uh, so all the producer organization have the requirement for equal treatment of all its members. So no special contracts, no special commercial terms are allowed. Uh, also, like like said all, all, all already, uh, even though the, the, the organizations are different, uh, we work together to, to, to support maybe maybe one stop shop is is, 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 is a tall order here, but uh, to support the services across all the waste streams. So we are really here to help the producers to make this as simple as it can be done uh, in, 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 in here. Uh, also, also compared to many other countries, as already explained, uh, the, the reporting processes are fully operated by PROs or EBR schemes. So, so there is no need for the producer to first report information to the producer organization and then report same or similar or or different information to the to the EPA or in in, in different different uh, reporting forms. So, only only one point of contact. And 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 also as already mentioned, all the PROs are owned and organized by by the producers. So there is clear motivation for simple processes to be cost efficient and transparent to to most the members. Uh, that was that was basically the summary of the producer organizations in Finland and the TUNC. And and if there are any other questions uh, regarding the TUNC, uh, our our general secretary Maya Holma is is uh, happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you, Olli. Uh, that was our short program for today. Um, now we have time for questions. If you if you have something that you want to ask at the end of this webinar.